G'day and welcome back. So this week I've got a really quick job to do and the DRO is on its way for the mill. So as soon as that turns up I'll be obviously fitting that up. But what we've got here is a gearbox out of a self-propelled uh, walk behind mower. Um, what happened was the bearing collapsed on the top of the input shaft and they run a plastic pulley. So obviously the bearing collapsed, the shaft went over, locked everything up and just melted the pulley clean off it. So the owner got onto the manufacturer and sent some photos through and they replaced the whole, whole mower. Uh, gave him a brand new one and said you can keep the old one. He's asked me if I can try and fix it. So I screwed around on Fusion 360 and drew up a plan. And then I built a pulley, which I did record, only to discover that I measured this shaft down here for the bore on the pulley, which is 12.01. So I ran this to 12 mil. The shaft up here, where it has to go on about there, is 11.9 and now it's bobbly. So I got all the footage and just reformatted the uh, SD card and got rid of the lot and I thought I'll start again. Uh, I did make a mistake on the plans or when I was measuring up the this one I took all the measurements of best I could off this and obviously made a mistake there and I Worked out the angle using Fusion at 14 degrees. And then I started Googling things and just, then I decided I'd measure the, the pulley on the, um, on the motor, on the crankshaft, and it works out it's 30 degree included angle. So it's a degree out. Uh, I've got a new bearing over on the shelf for, that goes in the bottom of this piece here. Obviously this has all got to be cleaned out, washed out with petrol. So I'll get into it, I'll make a new pulley. I don't know what I'm going to do about boring this hole, because it, I don't have any small boring bars. So I might have to modify the smallest one I've got to be able to fit through that bore, through an 11.5mm bore, and then I'll bore it to size. So it's sort of a real tight fit, because it just relies on a roll pin to hold this pulley in place. I could bore this out, sleeve it, but I think it's just, just make a new one. Anyway, get over the lathe and make a start. It's probably a good thing I am re-recording this because I've done a terrible job of the first one. So I found another bit of material, face it off and get it to size. It's going to be 60.7 62 That's not bad 60.72 No, 60.71 That's it are on the money. So I might put that bore in first uh, before I go and put all the V and everything in. I found a boring bar that'll actually fit in there and I took a just a real light clean up pass. And 
and it's got to be out to 11.92 according to the shaft. 11.17. Okay, I'll punch that in the DRO and start taking it out. Should be very, very close. Spring pass. That shaft's got a high spot on it, I reckon, right at the end. Hope we can have a fiddle with that. Okay, just had a bit of a fiddle with this shaft. Had some burrs and crap on it. And that fits. Oh, now it's stuck. Oh, shit. Oh, it's tight. <laughs> um, just got to break that edge now and then I'll start putting the V in. Okay, what I've done here, I've touched off on the end, gone in the width of the cutter, which is 3mm. Well, this pulley's got to be 15 and a half mil wide so then I've moved in obviously half that and I'm going to plunge cut until I get to 35 and a half mil I've got to move each side I've just got to work out how much yet I think it's 0.4 of a mil and then go ahead and put the taper in on each side the 15 degree taper we'll see how good this turns out may have to change that insert Okay, that's in third down to 35.5 so I just double measured or re-measured that one on the what's on the crankshaft still and the gap at the bottom is four mil so I'm going to shift over half a mil each each way take that out too I don't like them bits, those look nasties. They look like they could hurt. Okay, that's out to four mil. I've got to set the compound to 50, 15 degrees now. To set this taper, I know it's probably not the correct way to do it. Go easy. I've got a 15 degree angle block.
that's it 15 degrees now I've got to square this tool holder this parting tool up to the job and start cutting that taper in until we get to the bottom and hopefully it's right That's it, we're down to the bottom. So now I will change the camera battery and change this over to 15 degrees the opposite direction. So we wanted 4 mil in the bottom, 4.05, that's pretty good. Uh, swing the uh, compound around now, square it up, and then bloody part it off. So I've got to break this edge too before I go much further. Okay, so I've just worked out where I've got to be to part this off. Um, it's going to be faced off anyway, so we're a fraction long. Cup of tea will that cool down? I think that's hot. Lost my rule on here. Where'd that go? That's ugly. Let's 
it's almost good enough good enough never to be seen again in the mower this is pretty much what's going to happen okay it's got to come out of here now and have a cross hole drilled in it radio so i've used the center finder picked up on both axes found center obviously so this has to have a five millimeter hole through the center all the way through and the roll pin goes through here uh, through the shaft and that's what locks it all together so a pretty simple system really so hopefully we can get this hole drilled and everything goes all right I don't want to go any deeper there with that center drill because the side of the flute here will touch the side of the vein. I don't want to put any marks in there if I can help it. I might get a 5mm cutter first because it's going to, it's only a 4mm wide slot at the bottom. I'm just going in with a 5mm 2 flute, see what it does. actually ended up in the middle could be happy with that so he's got to deburr that now and then that's I'll deburr the bore as well and that's all ready to fit back up okay so what I've got to do now I've got to clean all this up wash it all out with petrol scrub it all up I've bought a new bearing goes under there which then fits down inside that cavity in there so I'll get all this cleaned up okay I've got everything all cleaned up I've got that new bearing installed I did rip the covers off this bearing the shields off it and re oh, washed it all out and repacked it again I couldn't get two new bearings, I could only, only have one in stock, which is not unusual. Um, it's time to go back together. So I don't know how much this, you guys are going to be able to see. Gonna go and give that a bearing. That shaft, just a little tap to make sure it is seated in that casing. So I'll be back. So it's definitely seated down in there now. Now that's right. Because these tabs here go to the top and sit in these aligns there, alignments there. So now what I've got to do is I've got to pack that full of grease. I'll put a heap of grease in it and some sealant some RTV or something and pop the top on I'm just going to use this that's what I got on hand premium wheel and bearing grease and marine Didn't have a lot of grease in here to start with. So I don't really know how much to put in, to be honest. As long as them bearings, thrust bearings have got a heap in it. Look, it'll throw itself around. 
That'll do it. Yeah, it was for a bit of rag. Where'd you put that? Okay, I've got to try and got our TV on it. Try and get this door to sit over there nicely. Oh, look at that. She's in. Well, bugger me. Better get a bolt or two in it. And I didn't get a bloody Allen key out ready. I did put a bit of grease on that, um, on these bolts. Yeah, definitely a cheap gearbox. <laughs> oh dear, I'm glad that's back together anyway. Sort of looks like we might have a bit of, bit of hope with this one. That definitely went on that way. Because the cable comes through here and pulls on that. New track. And it just, it's just like a dog gear. You've probably seen that in here anyway. So as soon as you um, pull on the selector, oh, if I can get it to move, pull on the selector, it um, pulls the dogs into gear. And... If I can hold it tight enough, it makes it turn. Anyway. Now I've got to get this gear on and the and the roll pin through. So I'll, I'm going to do this part off camera because it's going to be a real pain to hold and do at the same time. Well, we have had a win. It is all back together. Spins nice. Spins quietly. Even turns. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, as you see, it's all back together. Now, I made a change. So there was meant to be a spring that held tension up on this diff. That spring was missing. And I stuffed around, tried a couple of different springs making some I had here. And there was already a hole in the base. So I got a bit of angle and just slotted it. If you can see they're too good on it. And all that does is just push up on this, on the bottom of the, or well, there was a piece that holds a cable on the other side of that piece there, obviously. And you just sort of hold pressure up on that, which tensions a belt, and then just nip that, it's only a six mil bolt in there, just nip it up and it, yeah, just holds a tension on it. So... It's certainly a lot lot better system than what the spring is. Well, that's my opinion it is anyway. Anyway, it's all back together and he can come and grab it. So that's a success.